So, well, speaking of passing the torch, so let's go back two questions. One is Oprah, give me a story about that. Did you have a conversation with her? What, um, what do you, what do you remember? Give me one kind of cool story. One cool story is that, you know, I have Oprah and, uh, like I said, she had these threats, these security threats. And this is, you know, before 9-11 and uh, the, the war. And, you know, so uh, so really from the beginning, uh, you know, putting on large scale events, security measures have kind of creeped into my uh, my uh, toolbox of being a race director. So uh, uh, there was really two things that Oprah wanted. She wanted bib number 40. Yep. Back then when you signed up, if you were the 40th person, you got bib number 40. You you pay your money, you got 41. You know, that's how the system worked. So she would have been like 15,900 something, but she wanted 40. So to the day, I, I don't know who had 40, but he went to 15,900. <laughs> Oprah got 40. So uh, that was my first uh, uh, business decision. The second uh, one, the second one is that she asked about porta potties, you know. And, she, and you got to remember, she's never run a marathon, and she, wherever she did her running, treadmill or whatever. But if you're a runner, you know, the porta potty issue is uh, right there on top with your training on how do you. Uh, you know, solve these uh, internal issues that you might have. And How do you solve them? Tell me. Well, we explained to her that there's these things called porta potties, and they're back then they were probably uh, a lot of them were still made out of wood. Maybe you get a splinter. <laughs> uh, and I mentioned that uh, the commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, who's you know, if. If he needs to use the bathroom that day, he would go to the porta potty, and she's kind of, you know, they're kind of, you know, her, really her people. I mean, you know, they're kind of looking like uh, she doesn't do porta potties. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's that's all we have, you know. And uh, so, and then we're like, well, how are we going to take care of her? So they came up with an RV. So they 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 rented an RV. They drove that to the Marine Corps War Memorial. Uh, I took a a fence. And we put a fence, a circular fence about around this, this RV. And then you took about six Marines and given them their, you know, uh, the, you know, Marines follow orders. And we say, nobody goes, comes through the fence, you know? Uh, and, <laughs> uh, so the paparazzi, you know, I didn't know that name at the time, but I mentioned to you that Runner's World, National Enquirer, the Star, they're like, hey, I'm I'm with the media. I got a badge, and the Marines like, uh, yeah. Well, my my last general order is nobody gets you know by this fence. So <laughs> nobody got by the fence. Oprah was in the in the RV, and she's like, you know, looking out the window a couple of times, and it's like, this is unreal. Like I'm all. <laughs> People are like knocking on my door or, you know, where's the crowd? And and there's no crowd, you know, and she couldn't figure out like, well, where are they? Well, <laughs> they're on the other side of the perimeter because inside this fence when she went out and she could stretch and do whatever she wanted to do. Their people were like looking around like I said, they're not coming. They, they won't get in. You know, <laughs> a PFC says. Nobody gets past this point. Nobody's getting past the point. And, you know, eventually we had a, and then she goes, well, how do we get out? And, we just, <laughs> and this Marine just says, you know, part the fence. You know, there's not a gate where the gate was. You know, that's sort of the paparazzi because they think she's going through the gate. <laughs> just, you know, she just looked at, and I said, Marine, make an opening and the fence like explodes and we go out like the back door to make it down, you know, and it was like, Oh my God, she, I, she, she, and she turned to me, you know, as we were walking down and she goes, could I take some couple of those Marines, you know, back to Chicago with me? And I'm like, yeah, they, they belong to the commandant. They have to stay here. You know? <laughs> but she was, I think that's probably her first, you know, up close, uh, interaction with Marines and she just couldn't believe that the paparazzi, you know, her life is 
constantly on their you know, photo and uh, and you know being harassed, I guess. And you know she and all I kept telling her is, "You're a runner today, and I you're a first time runner, and I just want you to focus on running. Do what you train to do. Allow the Marines to do all the protection." You know, the Marines knew you were out there, you know, and once she started running, she was like any other runner. She, yeah. you know, there was no, uh, there was no other special treatment. And I'll give you one other one. Cause I tell you, it was a nasty day. Oh my God. It was raining. It was nasty. And if you, so as I mentioned, four hours, 28 uh, minutes and 15 seconds. So on the finish line, I, I got to spend a lot of time with Stedman uh, you know, her, uh, boyfriend, uh, partner. And, uh, so, and he's a, he's a big individual, very tall. And, uh, so when she came across the finish line and she's elated, you know, and she's been rained, she's soaked and Stedman is under this biggest beach umbrella and he is dry <laughs> and he's doing the boyfriend you know, like, you know, come under my umbrella, get dry or hug or something. And she's like, you know, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm wet and, uh, and I'm, I can stand in the rain. I don't need no stinking umbrella. And I, <laughs> oh my God. You know, uh, you know, being, <laughs> we're all in relationships and, you know, and he's thinking he's being the, the perfect uh, boyfriend holding an umbrella and she didn't want any part of it. You know, <laughs> Hey, I think we've all been through that, uh, but that's a classic story. 